All right, the only problem is I had it scheduled on a different link, so hopefully people saw the notification in there where I switched out the link to this one over here. Welcome, welcome. So like I say, every Friday I do one of these things. So we usually wait, we'll wait for a couple more people to come in. And then uh, as you guys have questions, leave them in the chat and I'll start answering them, uh, you know, just top to bottom. Hi, I'm Hi, uh, could I get the deluxe chicken sandwich? The deluxe chicken sandwich. Okay. Is it mainly just a sandwich? Uh, just a sandwich. Alright. Is that the Yeah, that's it. Alright, that's one deluxe chicken sandwich. You want it regular or spicy? Uh, spicy. 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 Okay. Yeah. Do you have a name? Sorry, what was that? Do you have a name? Uh, Tejas, T E J A S. Wow, that's an expensive sandwich. Hey guys, okay, so um, there's a Jollibee uh, in Dallas right now, so we're checking it out. So for anyone that doesn't know, it's like this Filipino, um, yeah, spicy chicken sandwich. It's like a Filipino, kind of like McDonald's, I guess. Like, it's more of like a K. Yeah, it's like a, the Filipino McDonald's. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining, Alexis. Hey, RD. Nathan, nice to see you guys. So sorry I've been a little bit MIA. I've had a lot of uh, work at my full-time job and um, uh, so the consulting work I do on the side. So, hey, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I know it's midnight in Spain. That's uh, that's crazy. The Jollibee line is always so long. Yeah, even, um, yeah, over here, the Jollibee line is quite long. I was surprised. We, we've been waiting in line for like five minutes now. Um, so that's why I was a bit late to get onto the chat. But welcome, everyone. How are you guys doing? Anyone uh, doing any, anything interesting for the weekend? So I have, um, I was a bit, uh, yeah, I, I've been a bit MIA okay. and I'm going to try and get, oh, there we go. Okay. What is the steps to become a data analyst, like learning topics or coding and waiting for this live in India? It's 3.30 a.m. Well, thanks for joining in from India. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I know it's super late over there. It's like what, if they're 11 and a half hours ahead of us. So it's what, 4.30 here, 11, 3.30, that makes sense. Yeah, so steps to becoming a data analyst. Um, I would say, thank you. There's no set path to it, and obviously, I, I always like to preface everything. Welcome, my, uh, Isaac. I like to always preface everything by saying that I'm an analyst in uh, the United States. The market over here is very different than the Indian market. Um, based on what I've learned from my subscribers, the Indian market is very um, concerned about technical skills in a way that we just aren't in the U.S. Um, so I would say, if my, to the best of my knowledge, if you're working over there, um, pick up a programming language and or SQL. So Python and or SQL, try and pick those up first because we're at, that'll at least help you get a job. And then once you're inside a company, it becomes a lot easier to transition into different positions within, within that company. So as far as steps are concerned, I'd say um, get a bachelor's degree um, if you're able to. Pick up a technical skill like SQL or, and or Python. R is also useful, but um, I personally am like a sucker for Python. And then from there, you'll be a lot more hireable as an individual and you'll be able to pass technical interviews much more easily. All right. What what else do we have? I don't. It keeps uh, the chat keeps going away. I don't know why it does that. There we go. All right. Three thirty in India. Hey, Ritham. Okay. Hi. I have a question. I often face in interviews. I hope you can help me. What does a data analysis project look like from start to end? Okay. So the first step of any data analysis project is to ask a question. Um, so I always like to say like, um, pick a topic you're interested in. For me the topic is like, for example, I'm way into cars. So in the United States, we have this thing called the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration. And what they do is that they post statistics on crash statistics on like, you know, cars of all kinds, safety, crash statistics. Um, and what I would do is I would actually like pull that data from the website. And then I would do run some kind of analysis on it, visualize the data in some way, depending on what kind of pro like what kind of like role you want that uh, um, the project you do changes drastically. So I would say find something you're interested in do uh, ask yourself a couple of questions about it, even if they're super simple, you know, like just like, you know, where are crashes most common and then make a map of your country or something like that. And then from there, uh, just start asking more and more questions. And as you ask more questions, just try and think of the most logical way to answer that question. And that process is what people are interested in in interviews. So I would say that's the way to go with it. Don't worry about the quantity of uh, projects. 
I have interviewed people that had five crap projects and interviewed people with one great project. I'm always more interested in the people that like have the one great project um, because there's just a lot more to talk about there. So I would say one amazing project is better than infinite bad projects. So that's, uh, that's my suggestion for that. All right. Lewis Bergen, have you taken any online courses that have proved to be extremely valuable? Um, ah, man, that's a difficult one. So honestly, I, I have a difficult time listening to courses. I just don't like listening to like someone talk at me for like hours and hours. So for me, the most effective learning technique was always to like find a project of some kind and then from there start like, you know, learning the skills I needed to fix it. That being said, Kaggle's Python course is top tier, one of the best courses I've ever seen ever. Um, it's very simple. It only teaches you what you need to know. It doesn't worry about theory. You know, they're just like, okay, as a data analyst, you need to know X, Y, Z. This is exactly what we'll teach you. We're not going to teach you anything extra. So I'd say that's one of the best courses I've ever uh, been on. So go to Kaggle and look up their courses and look at their Python course. All right, mute guest. This is, uh, and I'm just going to take a quick look at the bottom. Oh, uh, Callum Willis. Okay, hi. Is there a large market for free freelance data analysts? Um, that's an interesting question. So I think there is a large market for the skills that a good data analyst has. You know, um, so for example, like with all the free freelance working I do, my Python skills more than my analytic skills have proved to be useful and lucrative, and what allows me to charge the rates I charge. Um, so I, I would say like the technical skills you pick up as a data analyst are probably more useful than the analysis itself for freelance working. Um, because data analysts, at least in my experience, are usually just hired straight onto companies. Like they don't, you don't, you, you don't freelance them as much as, you know, like a developer, for example. Like a developer is a job that you can kind of like, uh, a developer in many ways, like the job is kind of like that of like uh, a factory worker as in like you can like slot them into different places and like there's an entire process like you know with like agile frameworks and everything of like we have a developer, he knows XYZ languages, they're going to be slotted into this section and we'll give them, we'll do a daily stand up, tell them exactly what they need to know. Um, with data analysis, that process hasn't really been figured out yet in a lot of companies and so a lot of times you have to hire people on versus like doing freelance work but there is some out there i would just say there's a lot more development work available than there is data analysis work but that's just my experience uh okay let's see mute guest question they always say you can uh be a data an uh, analyst even without a bachelor's degree with online certificates however this is the fact that almost every has an msc so uh data analysts having masters i think masters is overkill for a data analyst um Again, it depends on the country you're in, you know, like broadly speaking, my basic understanding is that Asian countries really like love just seeing degrees on people. Um, I, I, I have friends that have done master's degrees and um, all of them would be overqualified for a data analyst position. Some of them do it just because like, because they have a master's degree, but no experience, like, you know, no, they're, uh, a company doesn't want to make them a data scientist immediately. It, it depends on how you sell yourself, really. Um, so I would say like, at least in the United States, and remember, this is where my advice comes from. I can only speak for the US. You can definitely get a job with a bachelor's degree and Google with their like analytics certification, they say that that's equivalent to a bachelor's degree and they say they'll look at it that way, but it's too early for anyone to really judge that. Um, I do have a friend though that uh, he finished, like super talented guy, he came to the US, he did his bachelor's, did his master's, did his PhD. I forgot if he has a PhD in two masters or just a master's in a PhD. Either way, he's a you know brainiac. And even he's kind of like, eh, I don't think the master's is really like, you know, all that. I would say just like focus on like learning real skills and then like learning how to apply that at a company. So that's what he says, you know. Um, so I would say like get a, like if you can get a bachelor's, definitely, definitely do it. Um, if not, then yeah, like you're going to have to really hustle for that first job. Uh, okay. What would you say? So deep breath, what would you say is the most exciting areas in software engineering right now and in the near future? I'm biased. Machine learning, I'd say, is like really up there. I have a couple of developer friends. They they may have like an opinion on it. They just if you had to say, what's the most exciting area of like software development right now? Like, do you have an opinion? Um, I guess the default answer is kind of machine learning. But for me, it's more what's going on with storage solutions. Like, if you look on the gaming side, you have like the you know. Yeah, like the PS5's SSD, uh -huh. Microsoft's direct storage, mm -hmm. uh, which is an API that, uh, you know, you have to have specialized hardware to take advantage of it, but there is an API that they've developed that, you know, allows you to pull from, uh, what's it called, disk much, much, much faster, and so, decompress that data far more quickly than you could before. 
So for anyone that didn't hear, so my, my brother's actually a software engineer. Um, and then, you know, machine, like he said, machine learning is kind of like the default answer. But he mentioned something about um, what you, storage solutions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so storage solutions basically being that a big bottleneck in gaming these days is the uh, speed at which you can like actually re retrieve information from your disks. And that's both a hardware and a software issue. So, you know, that might be something to uh, start yeah. looking up uh, soon. Uh, at, when I went to a &M, there were some researchers who figured out how to pull from disk as quickly as RAM. Yeah, so apparently he went to A&M and some researchers figured out how to pull from disk as quickly as like, you can pull from RAM. And if you look at the new consoles, you know, that's like the PS5 and the Xbox One. That's, you know, apparently that's like one of the big advantages they have is that they just feel, pull so fast from disk versus um, older consoles. All right, next question. What are some good sources you'd recommend to learn Python and SQL? I find LinkedIn learning to be all right for the basics. Also, CBear. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, I'm very biased. I think my SQL yes. course and my Python course are some of the best out there for like just getting into it immediately. Python and SQL, I would again, always recommend the Kaggle courses. They're completely free and there's no BS. It's only what you need to know, nothing else. And even, um, I would even say a lot of Python courses are like geared towards developers. And it's, it, it's not BS, it's just like, it's not necessary as a data analyst like learn all that information. I can give you guys an example. I'm working on a machine learning platform for like my company right now and um, I was trying to deploy it onto uh, a Kubernetes cluster. And in that process, I was like talking to an engineer because I was like trying to troubleshoot an issue with them or with, with, with it. And he was able to point out all this like just stuff. I just like never knew about like my development environment and how to use like Git and everything. Or even like, you know, I like to use like uh, GUIs for my Git and like my brother and his manager have no idea why, you know, why I would use not use like command line. There's all this stuff that like developers either need to or just tend to learn that I would argue is not necessary for getting started in analytics eventually you should learn it but it's not necessary to get started and a lot of courses focus on those that information because they're like made for developers and the whole idea of like inserting heavy code into the analytics world at the like entry level employee is a relatively new idea like you know there's always been like people that were like operating at the highest levels um of competency that have used code and analyses but because it's a relatively new idea at the lower level that you know we're all kind of talking about right now i would say that um there aren't as many courses as there could be so long story short to answer your question kaggle and my youtube channel have what i would consider some of the best sql and python courses for uh, getting started as a data analyst all right next question uh best advice to dedicate to data science applied to soccer now i Hey guys, sorry about that. It looked like my um, internet cut out for some reason. All right, okay. So, where was I? What is your opinion on learning data technical skills from DataCamp or DataQuest? Would you recommend any? So I haven't used them myself. I've heard great things about DataCamp. Um, yeah, I, I've heard great things about Data Camp. Um, I'm not sure about Data Quest. I haven't uh, tried it out myself, but um, I, I, I'll say this. Be careful if you're going to pay for a course. I'll put it this way. All the information you need to learn to actually like do what we do in data analytics is available for free. There's nothing wrong with paying for a course. Everyone, like, you know, oftentimes, like paying for the course and having like a very structured environment where someone is like incentivized to keep you going is um, a, like is great if you want to like keep yourself incentivized to learn. So I definitely wouldn't say don't go to, don't go for a course. I would, I would always say that like going for a course and paying the money uh, won't inherently give you better materials, but it might give you better determination. That's up to you. Uh, that being said, I've heard great things about data camp. Never heard a negative thing about it. Uh, okay. How would you answer interview questions regarding anomalies? For instance, how do you deal with anomalies? Um, so I would say this is one of those questions you always have to have some kind of a prepared answer for. Um, as far as, um, preparing for anomalies, I guess, yeah, I, I guess if you had a more specific question, I'd be able to answer it a bit better. Um, I think an example is how I usually like to deal with it. So I, I, I think what, what I do is I have a couple of general stories that I kind of like, like BS my way into every example you possibly can, you know, like at the end of the day, that's what is an interview. It's just trying to convince people that you know what you're talking about. Um, and it's like how like how smoothly can you like relate uh, to the questions that the interviewer is asking? So I'd say get a couple of general stories ready, and like and when I mean stories, I mean like think of like projects you've done at either previous companies or on your personal. All right, sorry about that, guys. Just got I received a call on my phone. Uh, okay, so 
would it be better to, okay, so ABR, would it be better to have many years of experience at a big four consulting firm or a no-name mid-sized firm? So I think it depends on what you want, right? Um, some people I know are very uh, concerned, and there's nothing wrong with either method, but some people I know are very concerned about like their day-to-day -day happiness and like how, are, are they like living the best life that they can at that moment in time? Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and I would say that if for those people, oftentimes like mid-time, mid-term or mid-sized consulting can be like very fulfilling. Um, big four, I know very few people who actually like stay there for longer than four years. Um, because they kind of just like, you know, ring you out and like everyone, everyone I know wants to leave. Um, at the end of the day, it's like, you're just another cog in a machine over there. Nothing wrong with it. You get a great thing on your resume. They pay you really well. They'll teach you a lot of stuff. Um, but it's uh, most people I know, except for like, I know some people who are like are very specifically like they're like I want to be the best absolutely and they they like their whole goal is like I need to become a partner at like McKinsey or something. Um, but most people I know like generally like want to leave after a couple of years. So like you could tough it out and like um, get great experience over there and then kind of like do something you're more interested in later, or you know maybe you end up like really liking it. That being said, I think I would say in my uh, from the people I know most people are there just to get the experience. They're not particularly passionate about it. They don't like it and they want to leave as soon as they can. Um, so I would say like, given that information, you know yourself better than anyone else does and you should make a decision based on that. Okay, Daniel Bush, what's a typical salary for a data analyst uh, with a few projects in their portfolio and a good DA certification? Uh, it's hard to say. If you don't have a degree, um, then companies can and will undershoot you uh, because they can. Um, so I would say like, it depends on where you're looking for Like, so I, here's the information I'll give you. So if you're applying in Dallas, Texas to become a data analyst with a bachelor's degree um, and zero years of experience, I could say you could expect anywhere from 45 to 60K. Uh, 60K is like, that, that's very high um, for someone just starting zero experience in Dallas, Texas. Uh, from there, I would go ahead and like, you know, you can use websites to like adjust the salary for different locations. I would say that just because somewhere costs more doesn't mean you'll get paid a lot more over there. For example, um, I was interviewing for a job in LA where they would only pay me 10% more than the equivalent, uh, job in Dallas. Um, so for example, like, you know, in California, a lot of people are actually paid less than they should be paid, um, considering how expensive stuff is over there. Um, so yeah, that's the information I can give you. Like I can't estimate like his salary is very so much from like location to location in the U S. Um, and then even in the U S you know, like we get paid significantly more than we, than people do in the UK. I was in the UK recently. Um, and just the salaries over there are just not amazing unless you like work finance or something. Um, but even then, if, if you work in Europe, even for like an American, like, like an elite American company, like Uber or something like one of those like big tech companies, they oftentimes will pay their engineers less there than they do here. Um, so there's so much variation at the point I'm making. So what I told you about like 45 to 60 K um, in Dallas, Texas, zero years of experience at a bachelor's degree. Um, you can kind of take that and then like try and adjust it for wherever you live, but it's very hard to like, generalized incomes across locations but beyond saying lower higher this that you know you'd have to like ask someone in the location you're applying in but good question repent and accept jesus christ well hello repent and accept jesus christ that's an interesting username um also so like you know uh, i just want to let you guys know i usually uh, or let me introduce myself to anyone just answer just entering my name is shock i'm a data analyst working for a major fashion retailer in the seattle area um, I don't really live anymore right now. I kind of like traveling over the U S I was in, like Denver earlier and then London, did, you know, a couple days before now I'm in Dallas. Um, but the company I work in is in Seattle. Um, and I just do this to try and inform people about like, you know, and, and help people get into the field of analytics if they're interested and answer any questions that they might have. Um, you'll find that I do a lot of equivocating in my answers because the, um, older I get, the more I realize that like, there are so many caveats to anything that like any, any question that anyone could ask. And like my experience, for example, is very different than like, you know, other people I know that work in the analytics field. Like my um, uh, own, my first manager who has a very similar like story to mine, even his experience is drastically different from mine, even though, you know, we had the same experience and everything, um, like same degree and all. Um, so yeah, th that's just a couple of stuff I wanted to add. Um, also quick thing, um, the way these chats work, I do these every Friday, but uh, I almost never get through all of them. I'm usually on for about an hour. So we have about 40 minutes left. Um, I almost never get through all of them. So if you want your question answered, be sure to send a super chat. It'll float to the top and I'll be sure to answer that uh, immediately. So just as a heads up for everyone. All right. Uh, Darvish Kukreja. Hey, dude, I'm studying bachelors of applied data analysis at the University of Adelaide. Cool, cool, cool. Although due to COVID, I 
have deferred my semester. So in my free time, I'm studying Tableau. Any suggestions? I have a great Tableau course I highly recommend to you. I would also recommend trying to pick up Power BI if you can. The good thing is that these BI tools are meant to be easy to use. So once you know one, you can like pick up any of them. Um, but if you know Power BI and Tableau, then like you're you're good to work at any company that like is required because like all companies will use like one of these two basically. Um, or they might use macro tragedy, which is like my word for micro strategy. Um, again, micro strategy is one of those things. <laughs> it's one of those things I've like no one I've ever heard actually like likes using it. Um, and I, I know someone who like works in like negotiations with like for like software deals and stuff. And even she's saying like dealing with micro strategy is like the most miserable experience ever. Um, so I like to call them macro tragedy. Oh, and on top of that, um, their they, they their stock recently did really well because their uh, CEO was like, I'm gonna YOLO into Bitcoin and like add that to our ledger. And I'm like, you are a technology company. What are you doing? Like, you know, trying to like bet on Bitcoin. I mean, it worked out for them, but like, you know, it, 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 the, the, the product is not great in my opinion. Um, and I've not heard great things about like just dealing with the company in general. Um, but that's my little soapbox about uh, micro, micro strategy. Um, for anyone wondering, it's, it's, it's kind of a BI tool. I, I, I guess that's like one way of describing it. Um, that is, it, it's really good if you need to distribute analytics to a very large uh, number of people. Um, and this is where Tableau and Power BI kind of like hit their limits when that like Tableau charges you through the roof for like every license. So like, again, we work retail, right? So if we want to distribute a report to every single like retail user, um, like at the store level, Tableau can make it very difficult to do that uh, and very expensive. So uh, that's where MicroStrategy uh, uh, excels. But like from the development side, it can be hard to set up um, and it can be hard to like operate from an analyst side too. So I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, Tableau and I would recommend Power BI too. Stefania A, do you belong to slash participate in any associations slash, slash professional network groups for data analytics? Uh, <laughs> I like to think this is kind of my, like my, my, my uh, group for data analysis. I like talking to you guys about it. But um, within my company, I'm in a couple of groups. Now, every company I join, I either start or join some data science group inside it. Um, so at the company I'm working at currently, I am in like one of those groups. Samir Khan. Okay, let's see. I have two years of experience as a QA automation engineer, but I have learned all the skills required for data analyst role. So can I show my experience? As, uh, can I show my experience as a data analyst? One hundred percent, you can. Go ahead and do a project. And since you have uh, programming experience, it seems I would go ahead and like really dig into that for your um, uh, project. All right. Ooh, Daniel Bishop, can you rank the following in terms of value? Python, SQL, Tableau, Excel, VBA. Uh, it depends completely on the job. In my personal experience for the work that I do, and you know, you guys can watch my YouTube channel and see the work that I do and get a better idea of like what I mean when I say this. Um, Python is the absolute highest value um, in the sense that you can program just about anything in it. Maybe not well, you know, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the most optimal solution for every problem, but you can solve just about anything you need to with it. Like, you know, you can make websites with it if you have to, you can scrape websites if you need to, um, just about anything. You know, you can like perform analyses, you can like, query databases. Um, it is a very, very general purpose programming language. And that is why I'd say it's like the greatest value. And it's by far like what I've like derived the most like money from in the form of like my consulting work and even my full-time job, what I've like valued for. Um, after that, I'd say SQL and Tableau are interchangeable. I think Tableau is easier to pick up and make a decent amount of money doing. Um, but SQL is more universally used. So I'd say they're both interchangeable. And Excel VBA, um, oh, that's a difficult one, man. Because so to be honest, I don't even know VBA. Um, I know finance people love it, uh, and they will never let go of Excel. Um, but outside of finance, I have not seen VBA used that much, or I kind of see it as part of like very old reports at companies that people want to deprecate in favor of Tableau anyway. So I would actually have to put that last. All right. All right. Of course, Paulus. Um, I, I, you know, I, I love answering these questions and like, you know, going on like my little rambles here and there too. Um, and, and let me know if you guys think that I'm uh, taking too long to go through the question, but I'll try and get through as many of them as I can. Um, again, just a reminder for anyone that's uh, asking questions right now, I'm not going to get through all of these. I'm going to try my best to. Um, but again, if you send a super chat, I'm going to, I'll answer your question immediately. All right. Deep red. I'm starting CS next year in order to be, get hired at a big, te a big tech company, Fang. Um, what would you advise me concentrate in, in terms of external projects? Um, I think if I were you, I would spend every waking moment trying to get an internship at one of those companies. Most people I know that got into those companies were interns at those companies at some point in time. 
Um, and it, it, it's probably the easiest, like kind of like quote unquote surefire way to get a job in those companies to get an internship there. So um, they say like applying for a job is itself a full time job. And I wouldn't disagree. So I would say like um, look at uh, people who have like done so like uh, um, Facebook interns and everything. They all like make videos. And they all start a YouTube channel saying like my day in the life of, as a Facebook analyst or Facebook, whatever. Um, I've never worked bank myself. So I would recommend going to one of those YouTube channels. There's some like a lot of excellent ones out there. Um, I think Mayuko sure. has a great one where she used to work at Netflix. Um, so go to those YouTube channels, see what they're doing and try and do a project that's similar to that. And then spend as much energy as you can applying to internships over there. Cause that's probably what is like going to get you the highest chance of getting a job at one of those companies at the end of your uh, bachelor career. All right, James Standard, for someone relatively new to the field, what is a core skill set for data analytics? Um, data visualization, data munging, and data um, acquisition. Um, and data visualization, you know, that's what you'd use Tableau for. Data munging, that just means cleaning up and like being able to manipulate large amounts of data. That's what you use something like Python for. And data acquisition is something you could use like Python for it, or you could use SQL for it. Um, and like to, you know, go back to my earlier point, you could use Python for literally all those things too. All right. Besides LinkedIn, okay, so Miguel Quintero. Besides LinkedIn, where are other social media you recommend to get a job? Um, my brother really liked using, hey, did you get your job through Indeed? No, I got it through LinkedIn. Okay, so he got his job through LinkedIn. I kept recommending it, but but he said he really liked, uh, liked Indeed. Um, not really a, you know, social media network, but I'm not sure if there's a social media network to get jobs. Um, I know Made In, so like look at Made In NYC. Um, basically it's this, the series of websites that like, they have a different one for every like city out there. So there's like made in LA, made in San Francisco. Um, and they have a lot of job postings over there. So I think LinkedIn's the only social network that's excellent for jobs. And at the end of the day, in my personal experience, like the best one out there to get a job, like Microsoft's investing a lot of money to make that like the go-to place for careers. Um, and I think HR managers like know that and like look over there too. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely go ahead and, um, say LinkedIn is probably the best one and the only one I really know about. Proomster, not a question. Just wanted to say I've been really enjoying this series on Garon's machine learning book. Well, thank you so much. I'm really look. I'm really going to try and like put out another one of those videos uh, this weekend. Um, only like, you know, I've had so much stuff to do with like both my consulting work and my full-time job that like it's been really difficult to like put out a video, but I'm going to really try my best to put one out this weekend for you guys. All right. Uh, uh, Jane, hi, minimum, how many projects I should do as a Kaggle to get a job as a fresher? Um, one excellent one. I keep telling everyone, um, I would rather see one excellent project than any number of shit projects or like projects that are like, you, you kind of just copy what someone else did. Cause I, I was interviewing this candidate and this guy did this project and I happened and I, I, cause I spent a lot of time, you know, doing projects or like looking at projects myself just cause I'm always like, um, in some form of apl applying. And I'm like, this is the same thing someone else did. You just copied someone else's work. Um, the guy didn't get the job for other reasons, but that's what I like to say. Like, you know, like one, uh, and, and, and there was this girl I know. So she's a, she's a PhD astrophysicist, super talented, very, very smart girl. Um, she did a project on like makeup. Uh, like, like it, it was something to do with like makeup or something, right? But it's something I'd like never heard of before. I'd never seen it. And it was obviously a bespoke project where she tried to answer a question that she was interested in the most interesting project I've ever seen. Um, so I would always say like, um, try and do one very, very good project. If you're looking for a, like a number, if you're able to, I'd say two is good, but really one excellent project is all you have to do. And just keep improving on it. Just keep adding to it, you know? Larry Flores, hi, I just popped in to say that I started watching your videos and I have learned so much after a, just a few videos, you're a great educator and excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much. I, I really try my best to try and explain stuff in as simple a way as possible. And actually the funny thing is, so like, you know, for anyone that doesn't know, I, I actually don't have too much experience in analytics. I'm only like a couple of years into the field. Um, but I think uh, one of the ex, I, 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 I am glad that the, my relative inexperience, like remembering what it was like just a few years ago is, I'm able to communicate that to you guys. So thank you so much for that. Salary range for a PhD candidate. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you so much for this, for the uh, um, uh, super chat. It's uh, very thankful, like helps me, you know, like keep doing this. I am really looking to like offload a lot of my consulting and get into YouTube, like um, full-time outside of my like normal job. 
um, because I just like I love interacting with you guys. I love helping you guys and like seeing like what I can do to like give you guys as many insights as possible. So thank you so much for that. Um, okay, Larry Flores, hi, I just popped in. Oh, sorry, I already read that one. Uh, salary range for a PhD candidate. That's a tough one, right? Because I've seen PhD candidates kind of get screwed over and like get the same money that a bachelor's candidate does. But I've also seen PhD candidates start off at like very high salary ranges. Like I have again that 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 uh, coworker I was talking about who like is like a mega genius and has like a master's degree and a PhD. Um, he, uh, I have a basic idea of where his salary is and he's starting in like, he's probably in like the one fifties first job and he's in the one fifty K range. It's, uh, you know, somewhere over there. Uh, and that's probably like a low estimate. So I would say like in the United States on a, in a West coast company, you could be doing that. But again, I would always say like, like, don't lean on your degree. Like obviously like push your dreams out. Like, yo, I am a PhD candidate. I'm the best. Everyone else is an idiot. Um, but it's more about how you market yourself than just having the degree. Like, don't think that having the degree itself is like, people are going to care, you know? Um, so I would say that's very, very important. Like it's one thing I really like want to like communicate to people. I think getting a degree is good and I don't want to say necessary, but it's like very, very helpful. Um, uh, but I want to communicate to everyone that like how you advertise your degree is by far the most important thing out there. Like, um, the college I went to was relatively good. And I would always like talk about like, I, you know, I didn't learn anything at my university that like actually helped me with my current job, but I would always say like, I'm from an elite institution. I graduated with this thing, you know, but, like I didn't believe it, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if I believe it. What matters is if the recruiter believes it, you know? Um, so I would say like you with your PhD, like really market the hell out of that. And that's, what's going to get you further as far as salary expectations are concerned rather than anything else. So, like, you know, my, my brother graduated from like AM, and and I always say, I'm like, you know, like really dig into the fact that you're an engineer, you know, just like keep talking about it. Um, because, you know, I, I think as far as like what salaries are a lot, you can get really far with just being an effective marketer. All right. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you so much, Paul Spix. Don't forget to like this live stream. I see that there's 32 of you guys over here. We only got 14 likes. Let's try and like the live stream. The more likes I get, the more um, like this, like surface up into like other people's, um, uh, what do you call it? Other people's um, uh, feeds. And we can have more people join the and community and help more people out stefania lol this is literally the best way to describe my strategy thank god i i'm always concerned whenever i'm like coming out here and like going hard on the company and be like you know i do not like your product your product is bad um but micro strategy is one of those companies where like everything i've ever said about it like everyone's like yeah i hate it too it's like no fun um awesome how to scrape data from websites any suggestions i have a video on my youtube channel where i uh, scrape instagram for comments uh, i highly recommend watching it um if you're using Python, use beautiful soup and selenium. That's how you would scrape it. And um, uh, I'm actually going to be working on a web scraping project this weekend. R, Python, MATLAB, and not formal training in math and computers. Hell no, dude. 26 is young. What are you talking about? Um, I would say you're, you're, yeah, no, you're young. And again, at the end of the day, I would say like, there's no such thing as too old. If you want to do something in life, just go do it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, there, there are like real considerations and stuff. You have like kids and stuff to take care of. It's like, how much time can you dedicate to it? That's like a real consideration. But like, no, dude, if you want to do it, do it. And, you know, 26 is definitely not too old. So, uh, Filippo, um, don't be discouraged. Just go ahead and do it. Um, I didn't get a job for an entire year after graduating. Um, and I was just like, you know, it was depressing seeing everyone like making money or in like a, a like a master's program of some kind, like moving forward with their life. Um, and, but you know, today, like s seniority wise, I'm like in line with basically all of my friends. So I would say that like, it's, you're never too late and you can always hustle your way to join everyone else. Cause one good thing to know is that like, as you go higher up, it gets harder and harder to move higher up, which means that the lower you are, the easier it is to move faster. So keep that in mind too. Keep that in mind too. Marvelous AUB. I'm so sorry I'm late today. I missed a lot. No problem at all. I always release these live streams. Um, that way people can see them later. All right. Uh, oh, a NUR. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How many hours do you work per week? Uh, do you work a typical nine to five? So I'm very lucky that my company is very respectful of my time. And... Um, they are respectful of my nine to five. Beyond that, I usually work a couple of hours per night and on either YouTube or um, my consulting stuff. So personally, me, if I add it all up, I'm usually more, probably more than 60 hours at an, at, like in a total week. Um, oh, shoot. Is the sound off? I hope not. 
Okay, it doesn't say I'm muted. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think outside of my work, I'll do another 20 hours of work, but um, uh, um, but yeah, like my, my nine to five, I'm lucky I, I work at a company that's respectful of my time and like lets me work nine to five. Um, but my first job, my first job, I worked insane hours. Um, but then, you know, after a while, you start to realize that like, um, and this is not to say to work, like, don't work hard, but like, there are enough people at large companies that are just there for the paycheck and are just going to put in the nine to five to where if you just put in like 41 or 42 hours, like, or, or like 40 very good hours, uh, you can stand out. Um, cause I used to think you'd have to put in like 60 hours to stand out. And I'm sure that there are companies that are like that. I'm like, I have a friend, she works at like JP Morgan, Japan and like, um, or sorry, no Morgan Stanley, Japan. Uh, and she has to put in insane hours, uh, just to stand out. Um, but I would say like there are at, at the companies I've worked at, there are enough people that are just clocking in for a paycheck to where just being very focused in your 40 hours. So I would say that's something to consider too. Like um, hours is one way to stand out, but also just like being very focused and like being better than average is also an extra thing. So you know VMware is a good company for data analysts. So I know VMware is a great company for software engineers. I'm not sure for data analysts, but I would say you have a good company for software engineers. You know, make, you know, it's, it's not illogical to say it's a good company for data analysts too, you know. Um, software engineers have a lot to teach us as far as, like, uh, improving our skills. And be sure to like the video, guys. Again, I, I saw a couple of people liked it over here. We have 22 likes, and we have 32 and 35 people in the stream. So if you like what you're watching, please like the video. It's a great way to support the channel. It really helps me uh, have my videos surface up higher on people's recommendations. All right, where am I? Where am I? Are the official terminologies more important than knowing the concepts behind analysis topics? I'm asking this as I often forget the terminology. Uh, I would say you should learn the terminology at one point in time. Of course, the concepts are important. But here's the thing. When you're interviewing, right, you have about an hour or maybe two hours to impress the interviewer. And in that time, a, you are able to, a person who can drop a lot of terminology at that time can sometimes impress the interviewer more than someone who like, really knows what they're thinking about. So I will leave that with you. Like, but when you're actually on the job, obviously knowing what you're doing is more important. But if you're trying to get a job, terminology is kind of like a cheat sheet uh, for like getting a job. Like just like dropping random terms that are like, uh, not random terms, they, they have to be related. But like just like name dropping terms and stuff is like, a, is like a way to kind of like cheat an interview. In that like you may not necessarily know what you're talking about, but if you like say fancy sounding words, then like a lot of interviewers will be impressed. And not only will a lot of interviewers, interviewers be impressed, a lot of times the interviews are like, uh, employees taking time out of their day jobs to like perform the interview, so they may not be paying too much attention, and like these like words will stick out to them. Um, is, is, so it can kind of be like a way to like you know cheat. Uh, is what, what made you interested slash choose data analyst? Um, I kind of fell into it. Uh, it kind of just randomly happened to me, uh, and then I realized it was a high paying field um, that doesn't require too much work. Um, uh, but but also like I, I would say like it, it's kind of like um, one thing I like about analytics is that it in some ways a bit of a universal field. Um, everyone has data that needs to be analyzed. Um, so for example, like I have a friend, she runs like a uh, jewelry store in Instagram and she needed like uh, an analytics done on like her customers. You know, like it, it, it's, a, it, it's a great business, um, but the customer base is, you know, it's only so big, um, maybe a couple hundred people. Um, but analytics are useful for her. And like, I think I like the concept of uh, being people and that's kind of that's one of the reasons I like being an analyst. Um, I would say software engineering is not a great career in that sense. So like everyone needs a software engineer you know like it, it's a career that's just like universally useful. Um, so I think that's what made me and that's, that's one of the many reasons I'm interested in. At what point do you feel confident in your Python learning to start listening on your resume? Um, when I got into Upwork and I started making money doing it. So like I'm not saying I don't have to do doing it. But like for me, it's like when I started realizing that people would pay me for like my own skills were relatively like newbie, you know, they're like very like, you know, like like elemental my own skills. Um, that's when I like gained. Um yeah, yeah, to, to, to dance your question. The sound is low. Okay, 
Oh, the input device. Oh, the input device changed. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so my sound is still low. Um, I'm about to leave the car. Let me. Okay, how about now? Can everyone hear me? I'm going to keep saying so. Assume if no one says anything, then I'm, uh, I'm audible. I got my Jolie B over here. All right. Okay, so I'm guessing everyone can hear me now. Little bit better, but still low. Okay, so, okay, crystal clear. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna take that. What do you think about SAP administration and Hannah? Uh, SAP, dude, those guys, the salespeople at SAP, those guys are geniuses. The, that stuff's getting implemented everywhere. Dad, what do you think about SAP as a like a, their salespeople and like it's be, it being like implemented everywhere, or like as a career, like working? So my dad has done, uh, ER, he, he worked in ERP stuff um, for you know a, a long, long time. He's an Oracle guy, but uh, even he says that SAP is a tremendous company. And they, I, I'm guessing that their stuff is literally everywhere. Tons of money, tons of money. So that's uh, some advice from an expert. I'm, a, I'm a live streaming now. All right, all right, let's... Uh, Continue to live stream from inside the house with Jollibee. Let's go. Let's go. All right. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to place you guys over here. That way I can answer questions while... Oh, Karthik Nair. Welcome, welcome. All right. Okay, so everyone can hear me, I'm assuming. So let's take a quick break for a second. So for anyone that doesn't know, I was just at Jollibee. Um, and my understanding... I've never had it before. But my understanding is that it's a Filipino version of McDonald's. Um, and so I am about to try it for the first time and see, you know, what the big fuss is about. But I'm excited. House tour. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just came home. So I was actually, I was in London um, just last week. Um, beautiful city. Really, really, really cool. I really wish I got to meet people over there because I know, I know we have a couple of people that like are in the UK. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I had to go for a wedding and it's like, you know, immediately came back. So, wow, this is a big burger. Huh. It's like four bucks for this. Okay. Let me, uh, see if I can go back to answering questions too. Uh, Your sound is low. I think sound is compressed. Sound went off. Sound, sound, sound. Okay, so uh, Iashik, can you land a job in data analytics coming from a manufacturing background? So um, Iashik, could you be a little bit more specific? What what background are you talking about? Um, this is a really interesting question because I knew a lot of people on my last company that had manufacturing backgrounds. So um, Iashik, could you uh, be more like? Could you elaborate a little bit on your question because? A manufacturing background can mean like, you know, you could literally be a factory uh, lineman or you could be like, you know, um, a boss at a factory or you could be like doing analytics for a factory. So um, would you would you mind um, elaborating a little bit? Uh, Filippo, I think I answered your question already. Um, it's not too late. Uh, OK, let me open my sandwich first. Oh, wow, that looks really good. Oh, shoot. Okay. Wait, I just want to show you guys this. Oh, wait. Okay, so I can't. Okay. So this is a sandwich. It's actually, it's, it's quite large. Um, wow. No, it looks good. Okay. <laughs> Mukbang. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I should try, I should start one of those channels. Mechanical design engineering, for example. Um, yeah, it looks tasty, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so I think, so here's the thing. The way I see it. Analytics is kind of like a set of skills. Manufacturing is a industry. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, there's you know a billion different types of manufacturing, but like manufacturing is like an industry. So you can take analytics and apply it to manufacturing. So like, um, or, or you can take analytics and apply it to finance. So for example, that that's kind of like asking, can I be an analyst at Goldman Sachs? Well, yeah, they hire tons of analysts. Um, so I think it's a good question. I would say that like thinking, uh, think about it kind of like analytics is just a set of skills. 
it's just a generalized set of skills. You can take those skills and you can apply it to any um, vertical or industry, uh, like you mentioned. Mm. Yeson U. I am actually not too sure if Patreon allows that as a payment method, but um, how about this? Let me go ahead and add a PayPal to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, that way, like, in case other people have the same issue that you do, then we can, like, figure that out. Okay, guys, I have not even eaten lunch, so I'm going to have one bite of this because I'm so hungry. Oh, wow. Oh, hi, Hilti. Mmm. That's really, really good. Wow, that is excellent. Oh my god. And it's like actually spicy too. Okay, Batman, Batman. Um, oh yeah, Hyote. Uh, so, you know, so Hyote um, uh, comes onto my live streams like all the time. Um, and he, uh, well actually, I don't know if Hyote is a he or a she, to be honest. Um, so, I went to Jollibee because it's a, which is like this like Filipino like the Filipino version of McDonald's kind of and so I'm eating this the chicken sandwich from it right now and if yeah again if you come to these live streams regularly so like even Deep Red is here like all the time if you come to these live streams regularly then like you know I, I get to like know you and everything we have a good time um yeah yeah so rating out of ten um ooh hmm uh, considering it's fast food I would say like. It's like an eight or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not like the absolute best it could possibly be, but like it's really up there. I think I think it'd be a little bit spicier. All right, next question. What do you think about Master Dash? Python library as a visualization tool. I think it's much better than tons of BI tools and better because it's a better uh it's open source. So Miguel, that's a very interesting question. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. So I think it depends on exactly what you're talking about. So Miguel is at his question is what do you think about Dash? So I actually use Dash for a lot of my consulting work because I don't want to pay for a Tableau license for a lot of my consulting work because Tableau licenses are expensive, man. Um, and I tell a lot of my clients, I'm like, hey, I can make this thing for you in Dash. It'll be written in Python. Just fi find a Python developer, they'll be able to figure it out. Um, and uh, I have successfully made a lot of like, you know, stuff for my clients using uh, Dash. Um, the thing is, I think it depends on what you're asking for. So like if you're asking for like clients for a consulting firm, like that, you're, like that you're doing your, or sorry, clients for like your own consulting gig, I think that Dash is excellent. I think Dash is excellent either way. But at least um, in the US, if you're like working at a company, like they'll buy Tableau or Power BI uh, for you, um, or you can like always ask them to. And in doing that, um, you can save a lot of time because like the thing is like like Dash is great. Um, it can just be it can just take a lot of time to develop stuff for it and do very basic stuff on it, just because like you have to program everything. That said, Daniel, look into Streamlit as well. I've been using it recently, and while Dash is a lot more customizable, if you're looking to just like um, get up and running as fast as you can. Streamlit is a lot better for that, uh, but it's not nearly as customizable. But I, 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 I'll put it this way. I think it's great to learn it. Um, that being said, at least in my experience, companies are more than willing to pay for like Tableau and Power BI licenses. So it's between like Tableau and Power BI, I'd like learn that first and then go ahead and like figure out Dash later. Okay, Juan de Re uh, Rec Rection. Um, would you say data fields, science, analytics, et cetera, are more team-based or is it more of a one-man band thing? I think it depends on how you decide to structure your teams. Um, oh, well, thank you so much, Guillermo. Um, I think it depends on how you decide to like, structure your, um, what do you call it? Um, what was the word again? Wait, sorry, I forgot the question. Let me ask the question. Let me see what the question is again. Okay, so uh, what is being asked now is Juandi is asking if um, well, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Juandi or Juandi. Um, would you say data science and analytics is like a team based thing or is it an uh, is it a individual thing? I think it depends on how you structure your team. Like there are data science teams out there that work very closely with one another. Um, 
and even in our organization, we have um, two teams. One team, we have kind of like two teams, right? And I'm not going to get too into the weeds about how that works. But one of the teams, um, a lot of the work that they do is like with together and they like work really like well together to like get everything done. And the other team, which is the team that I'm on, we are kind of given a task and then we have to go to all the business stakeholders ourselves and kind of like handle everything on our own. Um, and it's just kind of the way the teams are structured. So I think that uh, data science and analytics can like – be a team sport or an individual sport like it's either or and it really just depends on your company and how they decide to structure it like it's uh there isn't a like a um uh what do you call it a um quick answer to that all right i'm gonna take a quick bite again one second mm. that's good All right, Kyote, so you are a she. That's good to know. Because, you know, yeah, you come you come to all the live streams, so I'm like, to be 100%, I don't know if Kyote is a he or a she. All right, cool. Next question. Are, okay, so Saksham Gupta. Oh, and just in case anyone is, um, uh, like, I, 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 in case anyone just joined, two things. One, if you like what you're hearing, be sure to like the video, um, or I think the like button's down there, because I see 37 people here, but I see 28 likes, and the likes are really great for the YouTube algorithm and help my channel grow uh, and allow you know us to spread the insights to everyone out there. So if you like what you're saying, please like the video. Um, and also, uh, I'll be I'll be on for a little bit longer, but um, the I never actually get through all of these questions. So if you send a super chat, then you know obviously I'll answer your question immediately. Um, so just as a reminder for everyone out there. All right, so Saksham Gutta, are MOOC certificates important, like Google Data Analyst professional certificate? Important is a strong word. I don't think that the certificates are important. And Google's is a, is different, right? So I'd say if, if you're asking better, I'd say Google's is probably better uh, and more highly looked upon. That being said, they're so new. So many people in the industry don't really know about them. Um and again, I would say it's kind of like how you advertise it and how your interviewer like just operates. Like some interviewers care, some or some interviewers don't. You can kind of get like, you know, lucky with some and unlucky with others. So just something to remember. <laughs> Nathan immediately disliking the video after he says like it, <laughs> but then re-like it. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Epsilon, hi, can you make an R tutorial like the Tableau one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I could. Um, I am not excellent at R, um, but I have a client whose work I need to do entirely in R, so maybe I'll like, you know, uh, learn a lot while doing it. What's the most expensive thing you've bought as a data analyst? Um, so CF, could you be a little bit more specific? So like, is the question like what I have bought like for my anal analytics work or the is the question like what I bought like as a person? Because um, I'm a little bit confused by the question. Hyote, I'm actually going over your SQL course again. Excuse me. For the second time, I have an interview coming up. Well, excellent. Let's uh, best of luck to you. Everyone wish Yote luck on her interview. Blat, what would be a 10? That's a tough one. Um, this is probably the best chicken sandwich I've had from a fast food restaurant. So maybe nine is better. Um, 10 is difficult, but like it, it's not like blowing my mind. It's like, it's like really, really good, but it's not blowing my mind. So, you know. All right. Next question. Okay, Yason uh, Useshe, I'm an economist. Programming in Python is really harsh for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, oh, awesome. We were at 37 likes. Great job, everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Python, it, it, it's kind of like this. Like, So for me, it was kind of like, you know, it took a while, took a while, took a while. But then all of a sudden, you know, like my skills just like did this. And now I'm kind of at a second plateau where like I'm not learning anything as quickly. Um but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not learning anything, everything as like as quickly as I used to, um, but it's a lot easier now. So I, I, I can 100% understand why it would be difficult to pick up, but just like, you know, keep powering through it. If you take my Python course, you'll learn like all the basic skills you need. So, and I, and I, and I try, I try my best to actually like prevent, um, myself from like going into like territory of like, oh, this, you know, like stuff that like is not as useful. All right, let's take another bite.
<laughs> Encore Bodge Pie. Um, it is getting better. I think what it needs is it needs a um, a little bit of hot sauce. That's that's what I could I could do with. Okay, so next question. Aner, what's a good place to start learning data analytics if I have very basic Excel skills? Uh, my YouTube channel, 100%. Um, and if not that, I would say the go to Kaggle. Um, so it's uh, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. Uh, and it's kind of like a data science hub for people like, you know, all over the world. And they run all these competitions and stuff, but they also have courses that are like no BS. This is exactly what you need to know, nothing else in order to like do well in analytics. All right. Um, can you land a job in a, to database administrator in like IBM or Oracle as a fresher? If not, how can you become one? Um, I'm not sure if you can land a job as a database administrator um, straight up, and that's a difficult question for me to answer. So I'm going to have to take a pass on that question only because um, Gamescom U, only because I really don't know. I, it's, it's one of those things where I can't even like venture a guess. Like I honestly have no idea. Madhwa, any tips on qualitative research and analysis? Uh, could you be a little bit more specific? I'm, I'm not um, I'm not really following the question. Batman, Batman, I'm 20 years old. Should I pursue a degree in computer science or learn and be proficient on data analytics skills that companies look for? I live in Cali. Okay, cool. And if everyone could like specify, if you're asking a question, try and specify where you live in um, because that'll like better inform my answers. So I'm 20 years old. Should I pursue a degree in computer science or a learn to be proficient on data analytics skills that companies look for? I live in Cali. I would pursue a degree. Um, as much as I don't think you need a degree to be like to like do the work that we do, a degree will help you drastically in actually getting a job. Um, so I would pursue the degree in computer science um, and then pick up SQL because a comp side degree may not teach you SQL. Um, so I would pick up the pick up SQL on the side. Ryan Juan. How do I get better at SQL? I got the basic, but I need like a project or a data set to work on uh, to get better at. What, what, what fundamentals should I start with? Uh, my SQL course, I definitely I'd 100% start with that. Kaggle, again, they have a SQL course that's quite good too. Um, oh, sorry, you asked for a project. Oh, that, that's a hard one, you know, because it's like, so here's the thing. In my SQL course, I actually teach you how to set up a database um, inside um, SQL Lite. And what I would do in that case is after you do that, just start, go ahead and start like inserting your own data sets and everything and just like start asking yourself questions about it, you know? Um, that's the only way I can think of like practicing to be 100% honest. It's like, that's a fair question. SQL is hard to practice outside of a company environment because like it's only used to store like query store data, you know? All right. Uh, Aner, can you get into data analytics from any background? 100%. Um, you can get into analytics from any background. You totally can. All right. Uh, M. Noman Khan, something on the laptop specs for data and analysts would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, make a video on that. I think that's a, that's a cool video I've been waiting to make for a while. Binu uh, Kandagon, when we deliver a presentation to a hiring manager, what should we be focused on? Um, so I think it depends entirely on the um, manager themselves. So I've had managers that are very technical and I have managers that have like not been that technical. And I would say, ask yourself before the presentation, what does this person care about? What are their KPIs and what do they want to maximize? Some managers want to see like certain information. Um, and I would recommend like, always focus your presentation on like what is important to this person. It's very tempting as people who like create stuff. So like, you know, I create a dashboard, I create like, you know, a Python script to do X, Y, Z to try and go into the nitty gritty and show people all the work you've done. But that I found never works as well as showing them what they want to see. So for example, like I will oftentimes like create dashboards for people and I'll have to write these very complex SQL scripts to get the like data in a cool format that'll actually work well with Tableau. Um, but I find that going into that doesn't really work really well. And I, I'm much better off speaking about like what data did I pull and how does this Tableau workbook work and what can you do with it? Like what my, the work I, what I built with it, what can you do with this? 
So that's kind of what I would say if you're going with a, with a manager. Talk about what, like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Bino. I completely misunderstood your question. Um, no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, hiring manager, you're gonna do a presentation on your project. Um, walk them through the journey. I would say like try and create a story. So for example, here, here's what I like to tell people. I'm a bit of a car nerd. I wanted to know, and I'm not only am I a car nerd, I'm a Toyota nerd. I like Toyotas better than anything. And like, I illogically think Toyotas are the best cars ever made, bar none. You know, it, it, it's silly. At the end of the day, like, you know, uh, different cars are better for, good for different purchase, purposes. So I was on a quest to prove that Toyotas were the uh, best cars in order to, um, you know, do X, Y, Z. You know, it was a while ago. And then I start walking people through the journey of how, like, how I got the data, how I cleaned the da data. Hey, Toyota gang, let's go how I got the data, how I cleaned the data, what I did with it. Um, and then like, you know, just keep going from there. Uh, so I think crafting a story is probably your best bet with a hiring manager. All right, let's get back to going in somewhat of an order. I'm gonna keep eating my Jollibee, by the way. Maybe I should start a mukbang channel. I like eating. All right, next question. Um, okay, Jack Mag. Hey, Shashank, I have an interview for a data analyst position in Nordstrom next week, any tips? So anyone that hasn't figured it out, I worked in Nordstrom, which like, it's a major American retailer. Um, so tips on your interview with Nordstrom. Uh, let's see. I would say um, focus a lot on your technicals. Uh, I think I got hired mostly on the, on the back of my technical skills. Um, and, and, and actually like, so with Nordstrom, I applied for a certain job, didn't get that one, but that hiring manager recommended me for another position. Um, and I think it's because like, I, I had like technical skills that they were very impressed with. So I, I would say, um, at least my experience, uh, with Nordstrom, uh, technical skills are really important. So, um, but it, again, that was just my interview. I don't, I mean, you could be interviewing for my team, bro. You know, we are hiring people onto my team. So, um, you know, maybe, you're, maybe, maybe, uh, I'll see you, um, in the near future. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Thoughts on Google data analytics course. Um, great course. No one really knows if companies will care about it because it just came out. Um, and I'm, I'm not even sure if it's like done yet. So I think, I think it's, the, the material is good. The course is great. You'll at least learn something from it. The only criticism I would give uh, M Noman Khan is that uh, it teaches R instead of Python. R is a tremendous language. I personally would recommend most people learn Python though, if they don't know either, um, or if they don't aren't in a course that's like very specifically teaching R or something. All right, uh, uh, Dian Huang, Tableau or Power BI? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think Tableau charges way too much for their product, and I don't think their product like improves as fast as it needs to. Um, I, I think they're kind of like slow to like add improvements to their product. And the more I use Power BI, the more I'm like, you know what, I kind of like this better. That being said, Power BI does not work on the Mac. So, you know, I'm, I'm immediately Tableau gang. All right. Okay, so Binu, can, can I, I have an interview coming up and they want to do a presentation have worked on. Okay, so we already talked about that. Thanks for the videos. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, so M who moving from simple marketing and uh, analytics to into more advanced analytics. Do I need to expect a pay cut since I feel like a degree? I'm a, I feel like to a degree I'm a beginner again. Um, no, I would say never, never, never go for pay cuts. Um, not never. So you're going from like one type of analytics to another type of analytics. But uh, like, like always try and demand a higher salary, uh, re respect yourself, respect your time. Uh, and, um, it, it, so it's, it's hard for me to comment, right? Cause you, maybe you're going to a job that actually should be paid at a lower rate. Um, but broadly speaking, I would say like, you should not be going for pay cuts. You should be going only for pay bumps, um, or at least keeping your pay consistent. Um, that being said, like it, it, the, the thing is like, you're saying you're going from like less advanced and like some more advanced and like, so you should actually be getting paid more. Um, even if you're a beginner, that doesn't matter. It, it's what the jobs you get paid. All right, let's have another bite of this. So for anyone that didn't see, it's uh, I'm eating the Jolly Bee uh, double or 
spicy chicken deluxe burger. It's really, really good. Okay, Aynor, basic question. But how does SQL differ from Excel? I'm having a hard time to understand the use of it. Okay. So here's the thing. This is actually a really good question. Um, so SQL is – and okay, so like I, I think you might be – so SQL itself is kind of just a querying language. It's just used to get data from databases. But maybe you mean SQL databases, in which case – Databases are really not that different from Excel um, Excel spreadsheets. Like a, a database is basically a very, very large Excel spreadsheet um, with no limit to how many rows you can store and stuff like that. Um, that being said, you can store a lot more data in a SQL database. You can query it a lot faster. Um, I don't know if you work with Excel. Like, um, So Excel has like uh, like the million row limit basically. Like you can only work with a million point oh four rows or something like that. Um, you know, SQL databases can get much larger than that. Um, SQL databases can hold data in a much like simpler format. They can like really shrink down the data and use less space sometimes. Um, and SQL is Excel is a tremendous tool. Excel breaks down very quickly once you start working with large amounts of data, or even like you know even even stuff in like a couple hundred thousand rows. You know, Excel starts to just like be less effective. Um, and that's where I would say is like SQL starts to become very useful. And if you want to like consistently store data in a very secure format, you will use SQL to store that. You will use a SQL database to store that data. Um, and if you need to access the data, then yeah, you'll be accessing it using um, SQL. So, for example, I'm working with a couple of people in finance, um, and you know, finance people like you know live and breathe Excel. Um, it's like cocaine to them, and the. Uh, they need all the data output into an Excel format. You know, perfectly understandable. It's totally fine. Um, but they need all the data exported into, like, an Excel format. But the the data that they want to look at is, like, 15 million rows large. Um, so I need to go into the spreadsheet. I mean, I need to go into the, the SQL database and then crunch it all down into something that's just maybe a couple 10,000 rows big and can fit in Excel very easily. So that's kind of where we would use SQL. So, for example, we were doing an analysis on uh, the profitability of different customers, uh, and that data had like 14, million, 14 or 15 million rows in like 200 columns. Um, that's not something you can manage in Excel at all. And so I would take – I took that 14 million rows and I crunched it down to like about 20,000 um, at a level of aggregation that was very useful for them. And then I put that into an Excel spreadsheet and then gave it to the – or gave it to the um, – excuse me. The um, uh, people that work in finance. So I'd say that's kind of like what SQL is used differently than like Excel for. You're supposed to eat their chicken and spaghetti. Okay, okay. Yeah, n next time I'll go check it out. I saw it and I was like, I was not sure if I should like um, uh, gone and got it or not. Bila, do you get any cool Nordstrom perks that you can talk about? Oh yes. Um. So Nord Nordstrom treats their employees quite well, actually. Um. Uh. Best way to find jobs LinkedIn. Um. Okay. So. Do you get any cool Nordstrom perks that you can talk about? I uh, get a very heavy discount at uh, Nordstrom stores um, and Nordstrom uh, rack stores. So the the discount is such that like Nordstrom, which is normally a pretty expensive store, actually becomes – or I'd say more Nordstrom rack – becomes like very, very affordable. Um, so I'd say that discount is crazy. Um, and we get unlimited PTO. If you're – they have these like levels of employees and stuff, and if you're like – so I'm at a level where basically like anyone that's on my level and above, we're given unlimited PTO. Um, so I'd say that's a really cool perk that they have recently. And yeah, I'd, I'd say those are two, two of the really cool perks. What's your take on Palantir? Um, so I don't know too much about it, but my basic understanding is that and, – and I have a similar criticism of Tesla, and you'll see this in a second. So I'm, I'm, I'm about to say something that's going to lose me half my subscribers if you've seen Tesla fanboys. Um, I love Tesla. I love the cars. I think they're amazing cars. Um, and, and I'll answer your question about Palantir in a second. I think that one thing that's interesting is that, like, my understanding is that Palantir, like, their product, um, like, they have, like, Gotham and everything, right? But, like, when they, like, hook up with a client, right, and they, like, do work for a client, like, they need to, like, dedicate analysts to actually, like, doing that work with the client. And my question is, like, do they scale like a, like a real software company? So do, do they scale like Microsoft, where, like, Microsoft li literally hits Control-C, Control-V and makes a new Windows license, you know? Um, and if they don't, then why would they get a incredibly, incredibly high valuation? I think as far as people have questions with like their work with like ICE and everything, that's a difficult question for me because I do think that like, um, like ICE does like uh, so. I for anyone that doesn't know, ICE is um, immigration and custom immigration and customs enforcement. Um, it's a 
Department of the U.S. Um, I think it's a part of like the De- Department of like Homeland Security or something, and I think it was created after 9-11. They've gotten into a lot of flack recently because of, uh, especially under the, under the Trump administration, and it's still continuing under the Biden administration, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. They um, very, very inhumanely treated people who were, um, uh, as far as I know, illegally crossing into the country. But either way, like the way I see it, like they were doing like family separations and stuff. It was incredibly inhumane. Um, so people got really mad at ICE for, you know, uh, my understanding is they, they just enforce whatever rules are given to them from the executive branch. So I'm, I'm not sure how much at fault they really are, but um, the Palantir does work with them. And I think people are upset at Palantir for that reason. Um, that's a tough question though. Like, I'm not really sure. Cause I, you know, at the end of the day, you obviously do need some, some form of border enforcement, but it doesn't have to be inhumane. Um, but you know, this also isn't a political channel, but as far as Palantir is concerned, like it, like that part of the thing about like, I'm not sure if they scale like a software company, but they seem to get a software company's valuation. I'm not sure. And that's what I was going to say about Tesla. I think Tesla's an amazing company, but I think their valuation is like that of like a software company on steroids, but it's not a software company. Like if Tesla wants to make money, they have to go manufacture. They have to go like absorb a bunch of materials, build a factory, manufacture a new car and sell that car versus like Again, Microsoft, which is like, you know, copies and paste their software. So that's where, like, I would say, like, I'm not sure how they get that valuation. Okay, so I am probably going to call it quit soon. Oh, we got a lot of questions. So, you know, like I said, um, I try and do these every uh, Friday. If you really want to, like, you know, have me answer your question, be sure to send a super chat and I'll be sure to answer your question first because we always have more questions than I'm able to answer. Um, But Deep Red has a question here that I'll answer last. In what way would you say learning AI stuff, such as a the the A Garone book, uh, you're doing a series on, can help you in your career? I think awareness is the biggest thing. Um, if you read that book, you become aware of so many technologies that you otherwise wouldn't be um, that you otherwise wouldn't be exposed to, and that's why I would say. Um, it's um, reading those books is useful, deep read, um, because you, you get exposed to a lot of information you wouldn't normally be exposed to. Because I think the technical skills are quite easy to pick up on the job, uh, provided your boss is not asking you to put out a result yesterday. Um, but being aware that you can't even use TensorFlow for X, Y, Z reason, I think that's the biggest thing you get out of those books. So that's why I, I, I read. I read to like just be aware of what's out there and be that guy that comes in and says like, oh, we have a problem over here. Here's a creative solution we may have not thought about. You know, that's kind of what you want to be. Hyote, for some reason I find Excel harder than Python. I'm waiting for you to drop an Excel video. Oh man, I'm so bad at Excel. Oh man, I, I've seen like people in finance, the stuff that they can do in Excel is like magic. So uh, um, maybe I'll collab with someone to make an Excel video, but I'm so bad at Excel. Um, I use it every day, but like at a very simple level. But I, I see what you mean. Like I think Excel is harder than Python too, just because I never use it. Uh, Chama Jones, what's the best paying industry for data analytics? Probably machine learning engineer, probably machine learning engineer, but thank you guys so much. Excuse me. Thank you guys so much for joining and watching me eat my Jollibee. Uh, again, the best fast food chicken, uh, chicken sandwich I've ever had. Um, I try and do these every Friday. I haven't been able to do it the last couple of Fridays because I've just had a ton of work, but I'm hoping to get like, like, like just burn through all of that this weekend, release a video this weekend, just go ham on the work. Um, and, uh, be, I'll, I'll, I'll try and be here next Friday. But thank you guys so much for joining. The support is always really helpful. If you like what you saw, please uh, give the video a like over there. If you have any other questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. And if you're a regular, if if you're a regular and you have a um, interesting profile pic, so like for example, like you'll notice that Hyote, I like I like mention her a lot um, because she has a profile pic I like recognize. Um, so for example, if you have like a cool profile pic, like I, I see a lot of people just have like the default Google pics, that makes it very easy for me to like remember you next time. So if you come every once in a while, like I would recommend putting some kind of a profile pic that's like interesting. It doesn't have to be you; it could be like anything interesting. Um, and I'll like more easily remember you. But thank you guys so much for joining and. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.